Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. The world is not on track in keeping the global temperature rise below 2 degrees Celsius. What impacts will this have and how can the EU prepare itself? Stay with us to learn more about climate overshoot and adaptation, one of the 10 issues to watch in 2024, analyzed by the European Parliamentary Research Service. The last decade was the warmest on record, especially in Europe, where average temperatures have risen by more than 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. The Paris Agreement binds us to limit global temperature increase to well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and aims to limit the increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius. But according to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, without drastic cuts in global greenhouse gas emissions, temporary overshoot is almost inevitable. And the greatest warming is expected in northeastern Europe, northern Scandinavia and inland areas of the Mediterranean. Now, climate overshoot refers to the period during which warming will have increased past 1.5 degrees Celsius, before falling back down thanks to large-scale carbon removals. And this will lead to more climate variability and extreme weather events. We are already witnessing the effects of climate change. More severe storms, shrinking ice sheets and Arctic sea ice, retreating glaciers, warmer oceans, rising sea levels and ocean acidification. So the longer the climate overshoot lasts, the more dangerous the world will become. Worsening impacts on human health, food security, water availability, social stability and natural ecosystems. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change also warns about tipping points, such as the West Antarctic Ice Sheet, which, if crossed, could lead to irreversible and catastrophic changes. But according to its chairperson, Jim Ski, we can act now to prevent these. We human beings do have the ability to make a difference and avoid the worst impacts of climate change. We have the technologies, we have the policy tools, we have the means of mobilising finance if we choose to take these up and take them forward. Mitigation and adaptation go hand in hand. As climate impacts accelerate, adaptation costs accelerate too. So the first thing to understand is that investing in mitigation measures today will lower the cost of adaptation in the future. However, while slicing net emissions helps avoid or limit the overshoot, stronger adaptation measures are urgently needed to cope with a changed climate and avoid losses. But what exactly are we talking about? Well, one example is nature-based solutions such as urban green corridors, which can seriously reduce risks from heat, droughts and floods, while helping protect biodiversity and our quality of life. But there's scope for action in the insurance sector too. Indeed. Considering that on average only about 20% of losses from climate-related events are insured, the sector's expertise in assessing risks could better inform adaptation decisions. According to the Climate Overshoot Commission, success of adaptation measures depends largely on six factors. Tailoring financial instruments and policies to local risks and adaptation priorities, integrating assessments into action plans, early warnings for all, stronger efforts to address climate mobility, and making our agri-food systems more resilient. But to do all this, we need more money. Although the Paris Agreement calls for a balance between mitigation and adaptation, only a quarter of international climate finance has gone to adaptation, and there's a serious gap between current funding and real needs. In 2021, developed countries pledged to double financing for climate adaptation by 2025 compared to 2019 levels. Progress towards this goal was acknowledged during the last COP28 in Dubai, and parties were encouraged to continue their efforts. During the conference, world leaders also agreed to the planet's first ever international framework on climate adaptation, which will guide investment and shape the implementation of adaptation measures for the next decade. The EU wants to make climate adaptation smarter, faster and more systemic, and there are various laws and initiatives in place to this end. Here's Enric Morgardo-Chimouche from the European Parliamentary Research Service. 
The European Climate Law, for example, requires EU countries to draw up national adaptation strategies and plans to ensure progress. With financial support from several EU funds, towns, cities and regions are also encouraged to reach EU mitigation and adaptation targets and increase resilience to climate change. But there are still many barriers to adaptation planning and financing at the local level, including lack of expertise, insufficient human resources and a lack of political support. So these will need to be addressed. With its several laws and plans, the EU has set a world-leading framework for a green and just transition towards climate neutrality. But in the light of current and future climate impacts, it will need to demonstrate equally high ambition on adaptation. We spoke about this with Lydia Pereira, a member of the European Parliament following this issue closely. And she believes the EU can demonstrate higher ambition on adaptation by addressing both the immediate and long-term challenges, reducing vulnerability to the adverse effects of climate change and ensuring that communities, economies and ecosystems are resilient. The question is, how? Let me give you three examples. Increase the allocation of funds for adaptation projects in sectors like agriculture, water management and coastal defence. Strengthening infrastructure resilience invest in the resilience of critical infrastructure to the withstand extreme weather events, as upgrading flood defenses, investing in water storage, enhancing the resilience of energy, transport and communication networks, and promoting nature-based solutions, restoring wetlands to buffer against flooding, reforesting areas to prevent landslides and erosion, and creating green spaces in urban areas to mitigate heat waves. Want to know more? Check out the full study, 10 Issues to Watch in 2024, on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.